Hey there! Today I would like to talk about fountain pen books. Now, this is not a topic that everyone will find interesting, but I, I think there are some of you out there who are like me and who enjoy reading an interesting book. Now, I'm not going to talk about novels. Today I'm going to talk about books about fountain pens. And what, a short while ago I, I had an email conversation with someone about this very topic, and she asked me whether I could recommend any good books. And actually, at the time, I couldn't. Uh, I, I, I was looking for books, too. But I think the problem with a lot of fountain pen books is that they deal with Waterman, or Parker, or, or Mont Blanc, you know, something like that. Uh, fountain pens of a specific brand through the years. And I, I'm, I don't collect one brand, so for me, that is not very interesting. So what I was looking for were general books, and, and so was she. And then she found some, she sent me some, some uh, links uh, to, to those books. One book I just bought, and another I, I actually bought um, uh, based on, on her advice. So what I would like to do today is I would like to cover two types of books. The first books deal with fountain pens, and the, the second uh, books deal with calligraphy. Um, so this may not be interesting to everyone, but I'll start with the fountain pen books. One of the nicest books I read, which wasn't even that expensive, but which I really liked and I thought was, was very uh, educational, was the book Fountain Pens by Peter Twiddle. I hope I, I pronounce his name correctly. It could also be Peter Twiddle. I'm, I'm, I'm not absolutely sure. He's the curator of the Fountain Pen Museum, which is now no longer a museum, and that's something his father started, uh, and now he... Um, uh, is actually selling the collection, if I understand correctly. In any case, he wrote a book, and I think this is a, a nice book. It is a, a hardback, comes with a nice dust jacket, and it, it details pens. Uh, it, it starts with, uh, this is the good man, by the way, Peter Twiddle. Uh, he's also a pen repairman. The book, I, I'm not going to cover the entire book, of course, but it, it starts with um, a chapter on understanding fountain pens with, with useful diagrams like this. Um, and uh, actually, the, the, the biggest part of the book, apart from these introductory chapters on the history of pens, and the history of fountain pens, etc., the, the, the bulk of the book deals with brands. So it's, it's like an encyclopedia. You, you uh, look up a specific brand. Let me see whether I can find something here. I'm just leafing through it right now. So here we have Wild Eversharp. Okay? While ever sharp, and you, you get some of their pens. So it's, it's nicely illustrated. Uh, he, he gives you a short introduction of the history of that specific company, and then he gives you some nice, high quality pictures of uh, nice exemplars of pens of that brand. So I think that, that's fairly nice. He even gives some tips on, on building your collection, and that even includes uh, a, a part on uh, how to you know, deal with, with pen auctions, which I, I think is interesting. And it has a nice appendix about his father, Arthur Twine, which is it's actually very entertaining to read. Um, so I, I, I like this. It also has a glossary, which is useful if you want to look up what exactly an aromatic filler was or something like that. Uh, so a nice book. As you can see, it's not huge. Uh, it's not hundreds of pages. Um, 160 pages, exactly. Uh, so this book I can really recommend if you somewhat new to fountain pens or if you are an expert I think this really has something for everyone and I, I, I really like this book okay then I have this book which is a lot bigger fountain pens history and design I was able to get a second-hand copy of this which actually I'm happy I did because it's a fairly expensive book and this saved me a lot of money um, I'm not absolutely convinced whether this is worth the full price. Let me be entirely honest about that. There's nothing wrong with it. It's not a bad book, but it is expensive. So um, I'll tell you what it's about. So this is a book by a number of Italian authors um, who have edited it and they've written the, uh, the text. This book is more of a coffee table book. 
So if you are looking for nice pictures, this is the one. Uh, it has some, some interesting things. Again, the bulk of the book is, I don't know what they call this, something like 100, 100 years of fountain pens. Um, and they give you these these nice, as you can see, it's it's huge, you know, full spread illustrations, a lot of, of colorful pictures of the, the some of the very first fountain pens, all the way up to more modern days. Of course, um, the book at some point it, it ages, uh, so this whole overview ends. I think I think somewhere in the 90s. Yeah, the last pen they have is from 1997, the uh, Omar's Hong Kong pen, which is an interesting pen, by the way. Um, what I like about this book is that it has two fairly original chapters. One is about calligraphy, which I think is, is kind of interesting, because uh, I, I like calligraphy. And it, it doesn't really deal with... it doesn't show you different alphabets or anything. And it gives you the history of calligraphy, which is, I think, fairly interesting. Another chapter that I, I really liked uh, was about art. And that's fascinating because I love art, especially paintings. And this, this, uh, this chapter is dedicated to pens in art. So you, you get all kinds of uh, paintings, uh, paintings that actually have pens on them, starting with the you know Romans and and going up to to much modern, much more modern uh, painting style. So I, I think that's that's fairly original. Um, so an interesting book. I I like the uh, I like this as as a coffee table book. It's it's if nice pictures is what you want, consider this one. Finally, I have this one, Fountain Pens Vintage and Modern by Andreas Lambeau, uh, who is from Macedonia, if I'm um, correct. Another second one, a second-hand copy I got. I suppose the um, political, politically correct term now is not second-hand, but pre-owned. Um, long live George Carlin and, and soft language. If that doesn't mean anything to you, Google this. George Carlin on soft language. In any case, uh, this book I haven't read yet, but this is like an encyclopedia, a true encyclopedia. This man, Andreas Lambeau, is one of the leading experts on fountain pens, if not the expert. And he, he produces these extremely high quality, extremely well researched books. So this gives an overview of several brands, uh, several pens within those brands. Um, mostly this is black and white, um, but it also has some color pictures, which of course look nice. So if you're looking for a very decent encyclopedia type of book, then you may want to consider this one. And he has written a number of books. He also has, uh, he's working on a series which I think started with pens from the US and UK and then followed Japan. Or is Japan what he's working on now? In any case, there would be a book on Japan, Japanese pens, I think, and then one on German pens. I'm not absolutely sure. That's, that's like a trilogy uh, of, of pretty expensive books, but I'm sure they are worth the money. If you're really into, you know, dealing pens or whatever and then, then these are the books okay now I would like to show you some calligraphy books that I have enjoyed uh, two of those are in Dutch but in fact they are translated from English so I'll, I'll mention the authors and you should be able to find them uh, in English I'm sure the first calligraphy book I ever got um, let me see if you can find the English author, just to, for fun. It's by Mary Noble, and the... Um, poor, poor, very poor, they don't mention the English title. In any case, the Dutch title is Calligraphy for Beginners, so Calligraphy for Beginners. Um, look it up, I, I'm sure you, you'll find this. I, I think this lady has written a number of books on calligraphy. Uh, I think this is a pretty standard calligraphy book. That is, it, it first, you know, gives you a, a short... It doesn't even give you history. Uh, sorry, I'm, I'm confused. It, it gives you some ideas on, you know, how to hold a pen and pen angles. Then uh, it gives you a number of alphabets, which you can try out with instructions on how to create the letters. 
and then it gives you some some ideas like you know how to make decorated letters etc. Uh, an, an interesting book, not not a very long book, it's, but it's it's uh, it's entertaining and it, it's it's well written and it, it gives you some some really nice examples of calligraphy. Now, one book I probably liked even better. Again, this is a Dutch translation. I just happened to pick these up at, at an art exhibition, actually, which is what got me started into calligraphy. It's again called Calligraphy in Praktisch Handbook, which is a practical handbook. I think the English title was something like uh, the Calligraphy Encyclopedia. Let me see if I can find the original title in the book. The original title was The Practical Encyclopedia of Calligraphy by Joanna Lawrence. So that is Lawrence as in L-O-R-E-N-Z. I'll, I'll put the, the names of the people and the books in the uh, description. Okay? So this book, this truly is like an encyclopedia. I mean, this is a pretty massive hardback. Um, this one does give you a, a short history of, of calligraphy. Uh, then it gives you a number of alphabets, uh, more than the other book, the first one I've just showed you. Again, some nice stuff. Um, and then it gives you, it even deals with embossing, I think, and it, it gives you a lot of ideas on how to apply calligraphy. Uh, like, you know, you can, you can make these artful type of things, um, which is interesting. So, this, this is a, a much more extensive book. I thought it was well written, and it gives some really nice uh, information. So, if you're looking for a very, like, a, a large text with a lot of information, you may want to consider this one. Okay, then finally, we have this book, which is an English book, Mastering Copperplate Calligraphy, a step-by-step -step manual, by Eleanor Winters. I've read this partially, I never got very far, uh, as you have probably uh, noticed from the, the copperplate I do in occasional videos. Um, this book is, is printed on somewhat cheaper paper. This is not very glossy. It's uh, not the greatest paper. It's, it's still it's, it's a nice book. Don't worry about it. As you can see, the, the, the writing examples are, are very clear. So um, that's, don't worry about that. Um, I think this is an interesting book because the author here shows you how to do copper plate clearly but she also shows you what not to do. So typical mistakes you can make, of which I probably make a lot. But in any case, it's, it's, uh, I think this is a very useful and, and uh, nice uh, work, especially can, it, it really contains a lot of information. So if you're interested in copper plate, which looks like this, then you get this book. Okay. There are more fountain pen books out there. These are the ones I own, these are the calligraphy books I own, and that's it. So, what I could really recommend fountain pen lovers of any level is to get the Peter Twidle book. If you are a new fountain pen user, you're not sure which pen to buy, consider getting this book. It is not ridiculously expensive, and it is a wealth of information, not just about fountain pens, but about how they work, um, I think even a bit about inks, so that's that's really useful. And don't forget, this guy is a fountain pen repairman, like his father was, so he really knows his cookies when it comes to fountain pens. Okay, so that was it. Happy reading. I hope this was useful. And um, that's it. So I'll see you later. Bye-bye.